Good morning, everybody. My name is Pranav, a legal intern at Lexis and Company for the month of June. And as yesterday, I have spoken about the types of partnership and the rights of partner. Today, I will be discussing about another important topic, which is the procedure for registration. An application should be filed by the partners to the registrar of firms. An office of the registrar of firm exists in every state. The application should be in the prescribed form or accompanied by the prescribed fee. The, ap the application must contain the following particulars which are mentioned in section 58 that is the name of the firm the name of the firm which are not contain any of the following words namely crown emperor empress imperial king queen royal or other words expressing or implying the sanction approval or patronage of the government unless prior approval in writing of the government has been made the place or principal place of the business of the firm the names of any other places where the firm carries on business, the date when each partner joined the firm, the name in full and permanent, addresses of the partners, the duration of the firm. The application must be signed and verified by each partner or his authorized agent in the prescribed manner. The registration is affected by delivering to the registrar a statement in the prescribed form accompanied by the prescribed fee. The registrar then issues a certificate of registration under his seal. The registration is effective from the date when the registrar files the statement and makes entries in the register of firms and not the date of presentation of the statement to him. Change of particulars in a registration. Section 60 states that if there are any changes in the following particulars, then the firms must intimate the registrar of firms for incorporating necessary changes in the registrar of firms. The changes can be change in the name of the firm or location of the principal place of business of the registered firm, closing and opening of the branches of the firm, change in the names and addresses of the partners, change in the constitution of the firm and its dissolution or election of a minor partner on attaining majority to continue as a partner or sever his connection. Now let's look at the effects of non-registration. Firstly, no suit by a partner against the firm or partner. Section 69 one says that a partner of an unregistered firm cannot sue his present or past partners for enforcing a right under the contract or even the partnership act. So for filing a suit, the firm must be registered and the name of the partner suing must appear as a partner in the unregistered firm and the name of the partner suing must appear as a partner in the register, register of firms maintained by the registrar. The disability to sue is only with regard to the rights arising out of a contract but not for a tort committed by a partner. In Union of India v. Durga Dutt, it was held that when a suit is filed without registration by a firm, it cannot be entertained by a court. The suit is liable to be dismissed and cannot be rectified even by subsequent registration. Next is no suit by firm against third parties. Section 69 subsection 2 states that an unregistered firm cannot file a suit against any third party for enforcing the rights under the contract. For example, when an unregistered firm sells certain goods to a buyer, if the buyer refuses to pay the price, then the firm cannot sue him for recovery of price as the right arises from a contract. The disability is only with the regards with regards to rights arising under a contract and not otherwise. Thus, an unregistered firm has got the right to sue a th third party for trademark or a patent right violation. Though an unregistered firm cannot take part, in, cannot take any action against third parties, the third party can always take action against the unregistered firm. In Perumal versus Central Bank of India, for a, it was for a question whether subsequent registration of a firm after filing a suit is sufficient to enable a firm to sue third parties. The court held that subsequent registration is unavailable and the suit must be dismissed. The next effect is no claim to set off or other proceedings to enforce a right arising from a contract. Section 69 subsection 3 states that, that a, states that a set off is an equitable defense to the whole or a portion of the plaintiff's claim. An unregistered firm or any partner cannot claim or set off <coughs> cannot claim set off against a third party who has instituted legal proceedings against the firm. For instance, if a third party has filed a suit against an unregistered firm for the, for the recovery of some money, then the firm cannot take defense of the money owed by that party to the firm must be set off against a claim by the firm. For example, if the unregistered firm files a case to recover rupees 5000 from a debtor X and if the firm has to pay 10,000 to the debtor, then the firm cannot adjust the debt by paying only rupees 5000. Exceptions In the following cases, the non-registration of a firm does not affect the filing of suits. In other words, it has the same rights as a registered firm, which are an unregistered firm can claim set off if the amount does not exceed Rs. 100. 
an unregistered firm having business abroad can only exercise all the rights of a registered firm. A partner in an unregistered firm can sue for his dissolution. After dissolution, a partner can sue for accounts or a share in the partnership property. A third party can sue its firm, its firm and its partners. In all transactions which are not contract, an unregistered firm can sue. And with this, I come to the end for today's discussion and tomorrow's session I will be talking about the dissolution of a partnership. Until then, stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.